Okay, I think we're ready. Thanks for joining us for our webinar for our Parks for Pollinators 2020 bio, lit, bio Blitz. Those of you who are joining us right now or are perhaps watching this later on, you maybe had school, work, couldn't attend. Um, we know that you're thrilled to be watching this recorded. So we're gonna get started with who we are. My name's Kim, I'm with the City of Palm Coast Parks and Recreation. I also have Brittany here with me. Hi everyone. She also is with the City of Parks and Rec, uh, City of Palm Coast Parks and Rec. Uh, we are working with the National Recreation and Parks Association. They are our professional development organization. They started this wonderful initiative, this Parks for Pollinators. So we are really happy to be joining this initiative along with many other cities throughout the United States. So they are cities from Florida to Alaska to Texas, all taking part in this bio blitz, which is really exciting. Um, so moving Moving on to the Parks for Pollinators 2020 Bio Blitz. What is a Bio Blitz, you may be asking? A Bio Blitz comes from bio, which means life, blitz, which is to do something quickly or intensively so you get Bio Blitz. And the science jargon is it's a collaborative race against the clock to discover as many species as possible within a set location during a defined time period. So pollinators, who are some of our pollinators that we will be looking for during this bio blitz? You can see them right here. We've got bees, hummingbirds, that's a super cute golden rod soldier beetle. We've got passion flowers, sativa, um, the gulf fritillaries, which I happen to see a lot around Palm Coast, caterpillars, uh, herbs such as oregano, bottle brush, which you see a lot throughout many yards, and then saw palmetto, which we have all seen. Um, there's a lot of pollinators out there. My favorite pollinator, Probably I like that Gulf fritillary. Brittany, what's your favorite pollinator? I gotta say the bats, um, and I know we're gonna come up and talk about that soon, but it's so cool to see that uh, it's not always the typical pollinator that you immediately associate with, or not all bees. And the really cool part about this project is we're not just looking for the animals, we're looking for the plants too that the pollinators love to go and pollinate. So. All right, so why are pollinators important? Why should we care about them? And really, to put it simply, our existence is dependent upon them. Um, between 75 and 95% of all flowering plants on Earth need help with pollination. They need to have pollinators to continue their life cycle. Uh, what that means for you is that one out of every three bites of food you eat is because of pollination, about $90 billion worth of produce is produced by pollinators, that's huge. Um, and additionally, pollinators support a healthy ecosystem. They clean the air, they stabilize soils, they protect from severe weather, and they support a myriad of other wildlife beyond pollinators. So they're an incredibly important part of the ecosystem. Uh, pollination. What happens with pollination? Well, pollination is when pollen is moved within flowers or carried from flower to flower by animals or wind. So it can occur naturally. Wind can pick up this pollen and move it around. You may have seen the yellow film that's covering your car during certain times of the year, that is windblown pollination right there. Um, but animal pollination is what we're focusing on uh, right here. So you see this little bee here, he's attracted by pollen. Pollen is colorful, it's that bright yellow, it's got a very sweet smell. Uh, the nectar, very fragrant, very sugary, and then the pollen also provides a great bit of protein for these animals. So flowers really do a lot to attract these pollinators to them. So while these pollinators, we have this beautiful moth butterfly here, um, while they're eating, some of that pollen kind of rubs off onto their arms, their legs, all their little antennae and pieces, and they will visit another flower, like this hummingbird is doing here, and they will bring this pollen over to another flower. So cross-pollination, they're sharing pollen between all of these different plants, and that's where you will have new plants to grow from. Uh, right here we have a really quick video. It's pollination in three minutes. It's by Cornell University. They are um, do a wonderful job of explaining exactly what pollination is. So we'll take a quick three minutes to watch this. Hi, my name is Dr. Mia Park. Have you thanked a bee today? If you haven't, you really should because bees and other pollinators are responsible for much of the food we eat. Did you know that 90% of flowering plants rely to some degree on animal pollinators? Or that many of our favorite foods need pollinators to produce? 
So who are these important animal pollinators? Well, a pollinator is any animal that moves pollen successfully from plant to plant. The best pollinators are highly mobile. In fact, most of them fly. The more flowers that a pollinator can get to in a day, the more pollination can happen. Most other pollinators visit flowers for nectar, but bees are actively collecting pollen because for a bee, pollen is baby food. Bee plants have brightly colored flowers, like blue, yellow, and orange, that bees can see clearly against the background of green foliage. Not only are bees amazing pollinators, they're the most common pollinators of our agricultural and wild plants. So if we lose bees, we lose a lot of our flowering plants too. But while bees are critically important, they're not the only pollinators. Did you know that bats are the major pollinators of bananas, mangoes, cacao, and guava? Nocturnal bats prefer white flowers that are easier to locate in the dark. Many birds around the world are nectivorous, and they make great pollinators. Hummingbirds are the ones that we're most familiar with. Like the other nectar feeders, most of them have very long beaks and tongues to reach the hidden nectar. So now we have a clear idea of why plants need animal pollinators, but how do they get those animals to do their work? The most important and common rewards found in flowers are food in the form of sugary, rich nectar and protein-rich pollen. Animals have come to rely on these rewards as part of their diet. Flowers cater to the way different animals sense the world. If you were a pollinator, would you be more likely to look for a single flower or a whole patch of flowers? Of course, you'd go for the whole patch of flowers because you'd be more likely to find more flowers with nectar there. Many plants need pollinators to reproduce successfully, and we need them for our healthy fruits and vegetables. You can be a pollination biologist too. Use what you know about how different pollinators perceive the world to start predicting who visits what flower. All right, so why do pollinators need our help? Why are we doing this? Why is it important? Well, pollinator populations are changing and it's not in the best way. Um, right now, many pollinator populations are in decline and it's attributed to most severely a loss in feeding and nesting habitats. Um, if any of you have seen recently, they're having discussions about the monarch butterfly and adding it to the endangered species list. That decision will come out this December and that's not a good direction. So we would like to help reverse that direction. Um, another reason they need our help is uh, pollution. We have the misuse of chemicals, we have disease, changing in climate patterns affect their movement and what kind of plants they have available. So it's all contributing to shrinking and shifting populations. And then probably what most of you have heard about is the honeybee collapse. Um, they have a lot of colonies. It's called the honeybee colony collapse disorder. Uh, we've lost about 50 to 90% of all of our hives in the United States, which is huge. It's a big number. Um, and then also we have wild bee species that are not cultivated for honey. One in four of them are at a risk of extinction. So if you kind of let that sink in for a moment, think about those numbers, um, you can understand why we need to take some good action to help protect our pollinators. So how can you help? Right away, you're on a great start. You are joining us for our bio blitz. Um, researchers and scientists can't be everywhere. They can't be in every city in the United States. So a great way for us to help out is by collecting data through these citizen driven science initiatives like the bio blitz. Um, we can help them document pollinators by doing it in the month of September. Researchers can go in and see what type of pollinators are where in this month. So just by doing this bio blitz, you are already helping pollinators out. Another way you can help is by cultivating a wonderful home garden. Home gardens attract pollinators. They attract butterflies, bugs, wonderful things that will help in pollination. Suburbs, cities, really anywhere you can have a garden. It can be a plant in a little pot where it can be a huge space in your backyard. Um, and part of helping that is making sure that you're planting the right plants. You want to entice and encourage pollinators. At the end here, we'll show a list of resources. And we've got some great resources for you where you can find how to figure out what plants you want to plant to help pollinators the most. And I think the easiest part to remember is just go native. You wanna make sure yep. that you're choosing native species because that's what's gonna be best for the environment. That's what they expect. Yes, absolutely. Yes. 
So where can you find pollinators? Um, obviously, Palm Coast Pollinator BioBlitz, you want to stay within Palm Coast city limits. So obviously our wonderful parks and trails. We have a list of parks there. You can go to palmcoastgov.com backslash parks to find specific locations. Um, but Holland Park, Linear Park, St. Joe Walkway, Waterfront Park, Bird of Paradise, Long Creek. We have all, Brittany and I have seen tons of pollinators in all of those parks. So those are great places to start. We also have our Trek It Out guide um, on that website as well. And that's super helpful for when you're starting to get out there and explore the trails. Yes. Um, and then if you're having kind of a day where you want to be a homebody, just step out into your own backyard, take a stroll around your neighborhood. Those are great places to find pollinators. They are not just in parks. They are just right outside your front door. And then obviously any open space within Palm Coast city limits, uh, county parks and trails, you could be at your local garden center and with the flowers outside, there may be pollinators there. So bring your phone, take a quick snap. You've got a pollinator. Uh, what kind of pollinators are we looking for? So these right here are the pollinators you want to be keeping an eye out for, the animals. You want to keep an eye out for butterflies, moths, uh, wasps, flies, bats, um, any flowering plants. Uh, you'll look, if you look in the project, when we show you the iNaturalist project, it kind of limits down what you want to see. Really any flowering plant, if it's got a plant, it's got a flower, you're good. Uh, bees, obviously, beetles, ants, and the elusive hummingbird. I will be super jealous if you get a picture Me of a hummingbird. Too. I think I'm <laughs> most looking forward to that. So this is the iNaturalist app. This is what you're going to want to download to get into our BioBlitz. You just go into your store. You will just search for iNaturalist. The icon will have a green leaf on it. Uh, if you download it, open it, you do have to create an account. You can do it with your email, your Facebook, or if you have a Google login. Um, right here I'm just showing we have a, a blank email account here. Um, but kind of the nice thing about the iNaturalist app is you don't have to immediately record your observations in it. If you are going out for a walk, I know I have an 18 month old, I can't take time to stop every time to upload my observations. I just take my pictures and I upload them later. Uh, but you do wanna make sure, you see here you wanna join our project. It's um, just type in Palm Coast and it'll come up. It's the Parks for Pollinators Palm Coast. And here you can see, I just chose a picture I took of some mushrooms, uploaded it. It will give you a selection of what it thinks it is. I usually will go in and kind of look at the description, make sure it's not only grown in, you know, a small hamlet in South America, make sure it actually should be in the area I am and upload it. I'll choose the project and there's my observation. Kind of a nice feature it does have is if you forget to add it to your project, it will go ahead and pick up that geotag. It will know where you took the photo. It'll say, oh, that was in Palm Coast. Awesome. I'm going to add it to our Parks for Pollinators bio blitz. So they do make it pretty easy. And I would encourage you not only, obviously we want you to take pictures of pollinators, but go ahead and take pictures of everything else and upload it that you see. You are helping out a scientist or a researcher somewhere and that's always a wonderful thing. Do you want you to keep it safe while you're out there getting pollinators? So please make sure you're not trespassing on private property. Uh, we don't want you to capture or harm animals, plants. You want to make sure that you're staying respectful distance between you and wildlife. Don't trample on plants to get it and get a picture. So just make sure that while we are documenting, we are also protecting. And why are we doing this? What are our event goals? Well, obviously we wanna raise awareness. We want to get the word about, about why pollinators are important, why we want to protect them and what we can do to help. So we also would like your assistance with that. Help us raise awareness. Maybe talk to a friend, get them to join the bio blitz and get them to understand why they should care about pollinators. Our second event goal, we want to document. We want to assist these scientists and researchers with their canon of research by documenting as many species as possible in this location. And the third goal is there is an award for the city that collects the most observations. Who doesn't love a good competition? Uh, so the city who gets the most observation wins prize money that can then be put back in to pollinator gardens. If you are not aware, we do have a butterfly garden. Um, I think the easiest way to get to it is the linear park trailhead. And then walk up through there and you will see that we have a, a beautiful butter garden. We are working, currently working on it right now. That is one of the goals with the prize money is to really rehab it and get it beautiful and growing and eventually put in some more pollinator gardens throughout the city of Palm Coast.
I think what's so great about this event too is it fits really nicely into our department's overarching goal of spreading environmental awareness and just teaching people about you know the local wildlife and plants and animals. A uh, large reason why most of you chose to live here in Palm Coast is our beautiful and abundant parks, trails, and just outdoor spaces. So what an amazing way to kind of get you out there exploring it in a totally different way than maybe you normally would. So we're so excited about this initiative. Yay. So like I said, we do have some additional resources. These will be, um, if you go to the city Facebook page, we've got an event there. I will link all those here as well, but we do have a pollinator playlist on our YouTube channel. Uh, the video we watched along with some other videos that will help you understand pollination, the importance of pollination, different animals that pollinate. Um, none of them are especially long. They're probably between three and 10, 12 minutes. They fit great into um, a science homeschool event, so. Check that out. Uh, the National Wildlife Federation has some amazing literature on pollinators. They've got some great articles on planting your own pollinator garden. Same with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife. And then pollinator.org, which is um, an organization that is completely dedicated to raising awareness and protecting pollinators. They have some amazing resources on that website if you want to learn more about pollinators and how you can help. And then if you have any questions, we are always available. Like I said, you have our Facebook event where you can post any discussion questions. We would love to hear them. You can email us through the general Parks and Rec email address. I'm gonna let you give that, Brittany, because I always mess it up. Yes, it's Parks and Recreation at palmcoastgov, that's G-O-V, dot com. So Parks and Recreation at palmcoastgov.com. Or you can submit a case through Palm Coast Connect. Yep. So we are so happy that you joined us today. Again, any questions, reach out and let us know. But we cannot wait to see you out on the trails documenting your pollinators. Yay, thank you so much, everyone. We are really looking forward to what you submit. Have a great day. Bye.